I've not got enough nice things to say about him, to be honest. He, Mike's just a top guy, isn't he? You know what I mean? He's just, he's good in every way. Um, but you know the thing with Mike, it, people don't really know how good he is, Mike, because he's not shown it in his fights. People have no idea how good Mike is. He is literally the hardest working person that I've ever seen, Mike. He works ridiculously hard all year round. So he's going to get what he's coming to, what's coming to him for sure, isn't he? He's, uh, he's going to be looking at a title one day himself, Mike's, Mike's a top guy. Being from Wigan, you know, it's, it's a massive thing and, and to have all the Wigan fans behind me, which they are, you know, I get support every day from, from Wigan people and uh, they really do get behind their own and they're a very proud town. You to have someone, one of your, one of your own, kind of representing on the world stage like USC, it's, I think everyone's, whether you're a big USC fan or not, I think having someone from your own town do well at a sport of any kind, but something so big as USC, having someone to do that from Wigan is, is, is really special to everyone. I think everyone kind of, everybody knows Mike, everyone knows about the sport, kind of wants him to do well, wants to get behind him. So it's, I think everyone, everyone from Wigan especially is, is, is very proud of it. Mike's away. Um, we'll, we'll go KO in the second. It was a long road, obviously including my wrestling career and stuff, you know, I wrestled for it since I was six years old and, and then I switched to MMA a long time ago and it's just been so, so tough. Going into the stadium, I was my usual self, absolutely terrified, nervous, butterflies, feeling sick. Any parent will tell you, you've got a kid who's doing any sport and they're getting to a pinnacle of it, it's absolutely horrible, in a nice way. And then uh, on the walkout, yeah, getting, getting a bit more into the swing of it, could see he was relaxed. And then the start of the fight, very nervous, very nervous, because I knew Nad, a good opponent, a uh, good all round. He'd never been finished. Um, and then when he started boxing, I mean, wow. I mean, I looked at my cousin, my cousin was drunk. I was still so on call sober. And it was just like a Rocky movie. I got hold of my cousin's head and I went, he's boxing it. And then uh, there you go, he got clipped and that. Um, to Michael it was a slip and that, but obviously he did get clipped. I didn't actually notice that in the fight, only afterwards when he was being interviewed that I noticed it. Um, and then when he had his hand raised, well, striking the full works, the full gamut of uh, emotions, excitement, uh, joy, everything. <laughs> um, he's just overjoyed. Um, I mean, I was sat, I wasn't sat with his family. Um, I was initially, but Jack doesn't like to um, to watch him fight, so I gave up his ticket because he hadn't wanted to come in. I ended up swapping his ticket, so I was sat with Bob, who does um, Mike Strength and Conditioning. Um, we were sat together, and I was just jumping. I just couldn't contain myself, I was just, <laughs> I was buzzing for him, I was so happy. Especially the way he won as well, I mean, we've known he's got it in him, you know what I mean? He's, he's sort of been so dominant with his wrestling and people say, oh, what's his this like, what's that like? His other attributes, you know, have always been there, but it was, you know, 
a good time for him to sort of show his, what he is. He's not just a one-trick pony. So the way he won was, you know, very satisfying as well. I was a little bit nervous when he was walking out, um, but once he got in there, I felt all right for him. I suppose I felt different emotions. Like I was, it was quite emotional because he got to where he wanted to be. He had his first fight and he won it, and he won it like not wrestling, which was another good thing. So I was just like happy for him as well. Well, I knew he'd been sort of clipped a little bit because um, it was funny, it was hilarious when we listened to his interview and he's took a bit of stick from it since uh, when he said that he slipped. But uh, yeah, me sort of, that was in my mouth a little bit, at the, um, only for a moment. And then, he, you know, he's in phenomenal shape, so he recovered very quick. Um, and then it was almost like sort of instantly when the sort of tables turned. But yeah, it was uh, a slight little bit of panic in there because it's not something you sort of used to seeing either with him. He's always been been very dominant in his fights. To be honest, I remember it happening, but I don't remember how I felt, because um, pretty quick he come back from it and obviously won the fight, so. But I just remember everyone was up in the seats, like throwing punches like he was in the cage when Mike made his comeback. So it was good, good atmosphere. I'm always confident, um, you know, I, I see what he puts in, you know what I mean? And nothing beats hard work, and I know how hard he works, but you know, accompanied that with the talent that he's got, you know, world-class sort of wrestling, world-class talent, um, obviously comes confidence, but um, yeah, I mean, it's just when there's a lot riding on it, I mean, it's a great opponent for him. It's something that Mike, you know, someone that Mike was looking to potentially call it after, you know, the, this potential opponent before he came up. It was a name that's been on, on Mike's radar for a while. Um, was saying to me, you know, I think I might call him out after the fight, respectfully, obviously, you know, because that's not Mike's sort of, um, personality um, but yeah when uh, when he sort of got the fight he told me who he had um, yeah it was made up because it's a you know not to say it's a, a derogatory term as a stepping stone but if once he beats him it's a, you know to propel him sort of right up into the top 20 top 15 so um, was just you know really really happy with the uh, the opponent I'm excited to go and watch him because it's been a year since we last watched his other one but yeah I'm excited and I'm confident for him no, I don't tend to look at his opponents. Obviously, he, he does his coaches do all that for him and look into everything, so he knows what he's doing. Got her. <laughs> no, he got her. He has got hair. Don't tell him that. He loves his hair. <laughs> this was from our wedding last year. Um, we love this picture because it's like probably the most recent picture we've got of Mike and Jack. It's like, this is going to work. Because we don't talk about it in the house. We don't talk about fighting, we don't watch fighting, we don't watch sport. Mike comes in and we'll watch a, doc a series on, I don't know, a film. He doesn't come in and say, I've done this at training today, or... So to me, it's like he's just been working, he comes home. There's no um, talk about fighting. So, yeah, I know, he's got this, I know he's got this fight coming up. And I am supportive in that, but... Our relationship and what helps him, I think, is if we don't talk about it. Because he gets that from everybody. Wherever we go, it's like they'll, people stop him and when's he fight or when you're fighting next. So, we don't, we don't. I mean, I'm looking, for, I'm looking forward to watching and to going down and supporting him, but um, I don't think I'm going to actually watch. I'll watch the fights and then as soon as Mike comes on, I'm going to leave. I'm not watching. I mean, I tried to treat it just like any other fight, you know, so I didn't get, you know, too nervous and let the, the, the octagon jitters, like they always say about it, um, get to me. You know, nothing got to me like that. I was, I felt, I felt at home, I felt like I belonged there. And I think I proved, you know, that I belonged there as well. Couldn't ask for any better, really, you know what I mean? I did have a slight injury before I went into the fight, but to be honest, that probably was a little bit of a blessing in disguise, really, because, you know, obviously everyone expected me to wrestle. He expected me to wrestle. I come out there, I fake some takedowns, I caught him with some good shots, and eventually, you know, I got a TKO finish. It's a lot of pressure, and then he gets people messaging him. You know, he's coming saying stuff like, um, you better win. And he's like, well, that's nothing like a bit of pressure, is it? <laughs> you know, or you'll get some people saying, um, Try and get to third round. No, we've paid a lot of money for this fight. We want to watch it. It's like we want to watch some entertainment. We want to watch a show. I think, God, it's just a, it's a fight. Why do you want? What's the entertainment about? I'm not. I'm not like. I know what people mean, but I'm like just go in and 
and just win and get out. Even if you're in two minutes, don't do it for anyone else. Just win and get out. Feeling great now. Obviously, I've got a fight, you know, and I'm happy that I've got a fight. I love to compete and, and, and step into the octagon. You know, it has been a year. It's been a tough year, you know, a couple of injuries here and there. I was supposed to fight in China against Mavsar Evloev. And, uh, you know, I was excited for that. And then I got injured a few weeks before, which was, was you know, it was, it was a nightmare for myself. But, you know, I'm back on track now and I can't wait. And I'm excited to fight in London again, you know. That's, that's, the, that's the plus sign of all that, really, to fight, to fight in London in my hometown when I had all the, all the Wiganers and all the support behind me last time. And it's going to be uh, triple that this time. You know, there's going to be a lot more people coming down watching me. And I'm excited, you know, to walk out and hear them fans. Because if he gets injured, then he's, he might not get another fight for months. And then what? You can only live off so much in a year. And it's not all about money, but it, when you've got kids and a house to run, it is. Yeah, you're right. It's, 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 it's tough, you know what I mean? It's like you're training twice a day to, to, to achieve your goals. And for me, it was like I was sat down on the sidelines, really, watching you know UFC every other week, every time it's on, seeing featherweights climb the ranks, seeing featherweights getting better and improving and and like I said, climbing the ranks and making the way to that top 10 and that world title. And I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, listen, I know I can be there and I know I can be in the top 10 by the end of this year. And it's just aggravating the fact that you, you sat on the sidelines injured. But you know, in between I was, I, was, um, I was developing, getting better, still studying, which is what I always do anyway. So, you know, I've not, I've not gone off the, off the way mark kind of thing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go on, on London and I will be good to go. Yeah, we've got Matt Wan and he's, um, he's a good opponent, he's a top 20 opponent. And for UFC to give me that on my second fight is, 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 is you know, it's massive really, because not many people get that opportunity to get a ranked opponent in, in the second fight in the UFC. So that, that's great for me, you know, that's what, exactly what I wanted, he's exactly who I wanted. You know, he's a good wrestler, I'm a good wrestler, I feel that I'm much better. But it's a great fight for the fans, he's, he's a European fighter. You know, I think he's going to come out to bring it. He's, he's, he's a cracking fight, you know, we can't wait for it. So, I mean, it's, not, it's no secret, is it? You know I mean? My strength is going to be my wrestling. But a lot, what wrestling brings over to MMA is the discipline side of things for your weight cuts. Uh, the, the grind, the, the, the fact that, yes, the wrestlers are so used to being uncomfortable and being in uncomfortable places. They're used to just pushing through it and pushing through it. And I feel I've got that. You know I mean? I feel I go into a fight, even if I'm losing, I feel I'll always find a way to win. No matter what way it is, I'll find a way to win, and that's the way I am. It's intense, but it's a privilege to be a part of that team because look how many um, UFC fighters Collins made. I think it's nine now, with Tom just coming into the UFC. So there's nine, nine UFC fighters come out of that gym. So that is, um, you know, it's a big achievement. One, one of the achievements I wanted was when I, um, when I got signed to the FC was being on that Team Carbon poster, you know, with all the other lads. That was like a big thing for me. Because when you've done that, you kind of, you, you got yourself to the UFC and you're against, you're with a lot, of, a lot of stars, really. So, I mean, being a part of that team for me is, um, you know, it's, it's family. It's, you know, there's a lot of loyalty involved. We work out, to, we work out together every single day and you know, even when I'm not fighting, I'm in to help the other lads. Even when the lads, lads are not fighting, they're in to help me. And that's exactly the way Colin wants it to work. And Colin's created a team, you know, so it's, it, is, it is a privilege to be a part of that team. It's definitely not been an overnight success. There's been a lot of up and downs with my career, really including my wrestling career, there's been a lot of injuries, there's been a lot of setbacks, there's been a lot of sacrifices. It's been a, it's been a very, very tough road, which is, I think for any, anyone or any fighter or any sports person, it's going to be a tough, long road to get to where you want to be. It's just that everyone just kind of sees the bright lights and you're stepping into that octagon in the UFC. But before that, you know, fighting in sports halls, you know what I mean? You was, you was getting your experience with wrestling and jiu-jitsu competitions and stuff like that. But... You know, it's, it's just not just all that type of thing, it's the fact that you, you're living with next to, no, next to nothing money-wise and, um, you know, you, you're struggling, you're kind of struggling through life to just to get to where you want to be. But if you believe in your goal and you believe in yourself, then it, it will happen and this is, this is what I've kind of always uh, fed off really and this is what I've always been taught is just to believe in what you want to be and where you want to be and believe in yourself and then, you know, it, it comes eventually. He says he gets nervous a month out to his fights and then what, we're two weeks out, 
he's, he's, fat, he's all right now because he's ready. He's done. He's done. His, he's prepared. He's done his training. He's just ready to fight. And then he'll come home, and then back to normal life. Take the dog vets on the Monday. Um, that's it. I know Mike will be in the top ten by March twenty twenty one. I think he'll have another two or three fights this year, so that should get him up there. In the top ten, definitely. Um, I mean through no fault sort of of his own um, you know he had sort of he's not really done much since last March obviously had the injury in in August and couldn't go to China um, and then obviously was waiting on an opponent and they wanted to sort of push him in his in his own country so I think this year is going to be definitely the timing of it again his potential get another two or three fights in um, you know and he's definitely knocking on that door of that top 10 so that's you know, I know it's definitely a goal of his. I know he's physically um, and his skill sets, he's, he's capable. He's definitely sort of up there now. It's just a matter of time. So it's just a way of working up the ladder. But yeah, top 10. In 2021, I mean, I want to be top 10 by the end of this year. If I get three fights in this year, you know, I want to beat Mac one. I'm looking at being top 20. And then I'm looking at top 15, then top 10 by the end of the year. That I'd be, I'd, I'd be um, overwhelmed with, with, with that. But then next year when you're in the top 10, and obviously anything can happen. Breaking news on CBS Sports HQ. UFC held an event this past weekend, but even they will be postponing their next three events due to the coronavirus. The next three events postponed, according to Dana White. Here is an update on how the coronavirus, COVID-19, is impacting UFC, Bellator, and other MMA events. In a letter from UFC President Dana White to UFC employees, the following events are postponed. UFC London, which was expected to happen on March 21st at the O2 Arena, has officially been postponed. And obviously anything can happen.